Good morning, church. Today's scripture reading is found in the book of John, chapter 12, verses 12 to 16. Verse 1. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on the donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. May God bless the reading of his word. Today is Palm Sunday according to the church calendar. It is the Sunday just before Easter, which begins the Holy Week or the Passion Week. It was on that Sunday more than 2,000 years ago that Jesus entered Jerusalem riding on a donkey. Why didn't he walk? You might ask. He always walked. In fact, earlier on, Jesus left Galilee from the north, walking 145 kilometers to Mount of Olives in the south. Now, from the Mount of Olives to the city gate is only about three kilometers. It is about an hour's walk. Why didn't Jesus walk? Was he too tired to walk? No. It was to fulfill the ancient prophecy of the prophet Zechariah. Chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey. On the coat, the foal of a donkey. That was the hope of the Jews. The coming king and Messiah to demolish all foreign oppression and to judge the ungodly. So, here comes the king. While Jesus was entering Jerusalem from the east, there was another person entering from the west in the opposite direction. It was Pontius Pilate, the governor of Judea. Pontius Pilate rode on a war horse with a huge army in an imperial procession coming to Jerusalem during the Passover feast. Why? To inflict fear on the people and ready to crush any possible uprising. Meanwhile, our Lord Jesus came with only His 12 disciples riding on a donkey, an inexperienced young donkey. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the Jewish people thought that a regime change is, was about to take place. They had no king of their own since they were under Roman oppression. The long-awaited king had finally come. Pontius Pilate, who, was later, who later crucified Jesus, was arrogant, powerful, ruthless, and fearsome. But Jesus was humble, weak, peaceful, and kind. One brings fear and death, the other hope and life. 200 years ago before Jesus, there was a similar procession. In 164 BC, Simon the Maccabee drove out the foreign oppression, drove them out of Jerusalem, he then entered Jerusalem triumphantly and delivered the people from the oppression of the Seleucid Empire. The Jewish people back then were paying homage to him with songs of praise and waving palm branches. Now, 200, now, 200 years later, this crowd who had witnessed the miracles Jesus performed and heard him preach and teach believed that he would bring them political rest and peace. He was the coming Messiah. So when people knew that Jesus was entering Jerusalem, word of his arrival began to spread far and wide. 
the king is coming the king is coming the king is coming everyone was so excited about the coming king when they finally saw jesus when they finally saw jesus riding on a donkey like their great king david they cheered and shouted hosanna which means help originally hosanna hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord even the king of israel the long awaited king had arrived they blessed jesus with the priestly blessing they paid homage to jesus with palm branches when jesus rode into jerusalem there was an uproar the entire city was in turmoil because of a clash of two powers the kingdom of god and the roman empire his disciples of course didn't understand that but later on john explained why now notice that john wrote the gospel at a time after jesus had ascended to heaven 70 years later the clash between the church and the roman empire only got more intense and worsened the early church had never seen jesus they heard a lot about jesus but they had never seen jesus and now they were going through a difficult time being oppressed by the roman empire john told them verse 15 fear not fear not daughter of zion behold your king is coming sitting on a donkey's coat church today the word of god is speaking to us fear not behold your king fear not behold the king this palm sunday we want to behold the king like never before this is the most difficult time we are scattered but we are together yes we are scattered but we are together behold our king behold our king we are together beholding our king welcoming our king coming to us the turmoil of palm sunday is not confined only in jerusalem we are facing a turmoil of global proportions coronavirus is and has been the number one topic for the last four months never before has a threat been so immense and so real to us all it affects everyone every area of our life too many uncertainties lay before us our health our job security financial situation family well-being and church unity maybe this turmoil is good for us it is to shake us up to wake, awake us from our spiritual sleepiness and stupor this turmoil is to bring us back to life not to death but church we don't need covid 19 to do that to us the work of the holy spirit is convicting us each day now however it is clearer than before what are the old ways of our thinking seeing and acting that need to be shaken up the fear that is inflicted upon us only forces us to face our real fears and our hidden problems church what do you fear what do you really fear the coronavirus or the coronated jesus the virus that is outside of us or the spiritual virus that is inside of us our sins what do you fear the coronavirus or the coronated jesus what is the thing that causes you to not move forward what is weighing you down fear not fear not our king jesus is coming to you he is coming to us unexpectedly but victoriously 
He will come not riding on a donkey as the lame to be slain. He will come riding on a war horse as the lion of Judah. The turmoil of this day is also the triumph of this day. We are bringing the victory of Jesus into the present. The hope of Palm Sunday is not in the donkey. The hope of Palm Sunday is not in the Hosanna or the Palm. It is in the presence of the victorious Christ. What are you afraid of? What is your fear, church? Fear not, fear not. Behold the King. If you are too weak to go to Him, He is coming to you. Fear not and behold His face. If you do not know how to go to Him, let Him come to you. Church, do you see Jesus coming? When Jesus comes to Bethany, you just never know when He might come or what He might do. He might challenge, he might challenge the things that are most dear to us, the things that are keeping us away from God. But He may comfort you. He may lift you up. He may lift you, lift your crushed spirits and make you whole again. The issue is, do you see Him coming? Are you willing to let Him come into your life? A child was having nightmares and didn't dare to go back to sleep. So she told her father, Papa, please stay by my side. When I have nightmares again and when I open my eyes, I want to see you. When I see your face, I will not be afraid anymore. What are you beholding? What will you see? The force that will bring fear to you or the person that will bring you peace? What are you beholding? Yes, indeed, the coronavirus disrupts our lives, destroys our daily schedule, shatters our dreams. But the coronated Christ will bring us comfort, peace, joy, hope, and victory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us all pray together. Our gracious Father, we thank you for sending us your Son, Jesus, riding on a donkey for us 2,000 years ago. But He will come back to us riding on a war horse as the Lion of Judah. Father, we thank you because in Jesus, we find comfort in times of stress. In Jesus, we find peace in times of trouble. In Jesus, we find joy in times of pain and hope in times of suffering. Help us, O Lord, to look up to Him and fix our eyes on Jesus always. Through His name, we pray. Amen. Shall we all stand, church, and receive the benediction? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace, now and forevermore. Amen. Shall we have our silent meditation and prayer before we dismiss? <laughs>